Hi everyone, I'm Austin with Laguna Tools, and welcome to our CNC training and tech tips. In this video, we're going to show you how to run a file. To get started, let's make sure we turn our machine on. First, always make sure the e-stop has been disengaged. Then, turn the machine on. Once the machine has been turned on, you'll be confronted with the home screen. It is important to make sure your machine is homed every single time it's turned on. The homing procedure is a calibration process. Press the OK button, and then press Home. The Z will come up first, followed by the X and Y. This machine uses magnetic proximity switches and tabs on all three of the axes. The designated home position is always going to be the front left hand corner. Once the machine has completed the home procedure, it now knows its travel limits in all three of the axes. Now that the machine has been homed, we can jog in any of the three axes. X, Y, and Z will all be located here. To jog, simply hold in any one of the three. It is important to note that you can change the jog speed by pressing the negative button on the override and jog at a much slower speed. Positive will increase your jog speed. You can also jog in a step mode by switching from continuous to step and the amount that you're going to be moving is indicated here under step distance. For each press if I want to move one millimeter, I will change to one. And with every tap of the button, the X will move in one millimeter increments. This can be increased to 10. When we're ready to transfer our files to the machine, we'll do that via a flash drive. Simply plug the flash drive in, and all of our loading will be done from the controller. We're now ready to load a file. After our flash drive has been inserted, we can press the load file button and that's going to bring up all the files that are currently on the controller. But first, we have to transfer our files from the USB flash drive to the control solution. So we'll press cancel and go to open file. Once we press open file, we'll go down to the bottom and select USB. We can now see on the left side of the screen all the files that are currently on the controller and all the files that are located on our USB stick. We'll highlight and check the two that we want and then press transfer. We'll see that both of those files have now moved over to the internal memory. We can now press the home button. That will return us back to our main screen. From here, we can now press the load file button and we'll see both of those files have now moved into our internal memory. We'll select the first file and press OK. Once that file has been selected, we will then receive on the top of our screen a visual image of where we'll be cutting. So now that our files have been loaded, it's time to set the origins for our job. For this workpiece, we've clamped down three of our four corners. We're going to set our origin point in the lower left hand corner. That's established in our software. So we're going to start by inserting our quarter inch tool, setting our XY0, our Z0, our spindle RPM, and then we're ready to run our file. This machine is going to include two collets. Both are ER20, quarter inch and eighth inch. So we'll start by grabbing our quarter inch collet and making sure that it locks fully into the collet nut. It should snap in place. It can now be threaded into the spindle. We're going to be using a quarter inch shank 90 degree V bit for this job. So we'll insert that next and using our included collet wrenches we'll lock that into place. It's an important to note here not to over tighten these as you can mess up the threads on the spindle. 
Now that our bit has been inserted, it's time to set our origins. We'll start by setting the X and Y first. For that, we'll move back over to continuous mode, and we're gonna jog the bit to the lower left-hand corner of our workpiece. Now remember, in your software, you will establish either the lower left-hand corner or the center of your workpiece as your origin point. For this job, we've selected the lower left-hand corner, so now let's jog the bit to that location. We'll use the continuous mode on the controller to get us close. And then once we're close, we'll switch over to step mode. Now that we're close, we'll switch to step. And we will set this using one millimeter adjustments until we've reached the lower left hand corner of this workpiece. Now remember, if you need to refine this adjustment, we can move to one-tenth of a millimeter and get a little bit closer. Once we've reached the position that we would like to set as the X, Y, zero, we will highlight X and Y on our controller and press the set zero button. You'll notice zero and zero is now reading for X and Y that means that that is now a set origin position. The next thing to do from here is to raise the Z out of the way. We can go back to continuous mode. We'll raise this up, secure our clamp in the lower left hand corner, and then set our Z0. When you're ready to set your Z0, you have two methods. You can use the included touch off puck, or you can do the manual method. If you're using the touch off puck, the touch off puck will plug in to the back side of the gantry, place it on top or at the base of your material. This is going to be indicated by your software setting. We have decided to use the top of the material, so we'll place the puck on top of the material and we'll go back to our controller. Now that our puck has been plugged in, we'll go back to the controller and press auto zero. The Z will now start moving in the negative direction until it makes contact with the touch-off puck. Once the Z has raised up, your Z0 has now been set using your touch-off puck. If you decide to set your Z manually, we'll simply jog it down to the surface of the material. Once you get close, we'll move to step mode. and we'll jog down by one millimeter increments. As you start to get close to the material, we can now switch to a tenth of a millimeter. You can use either a flashlight or a piece of paper to see if you've reached that. If using a flashlight, simply jog down until the tip of the bit is touching your shadow. Once the bit is at the surface of the material, we can then go back to the controller and set the Z0 manually. We'll highlight the Z and press set zero. Z will now read zero. It is important once you've done this to always remember to switch back to continuous mode and raise the Z back up before starting your job. Now that our file has been loaded, our materials clamped down, and our origins have been set, the last thing to do is set our spindle RPM and then run our file. Spindle RPM can be set here. Right now, we want to set this bit to be about 18,000 RPM, so we're going to press the plus button until we get 18,000, and there it is. Now that our spindle speed has been set, pressing the cycle start button will begin the file. If you have to stop the file for any reason, simply press the reset button.
Now that this file is completed, we can clean anything up. I like to use a dental pick for things like this. We can now load our second file and continue our run. Now it's time to run our next file. Since we're not changing tooling and we're using the same bit, there's no need to do a Z0. So we'll press the load file button again, select our next file, press OK. We'll get a visual rendering that will appear here after it loads and press cycle start. And just like that, you can see how easy this really is. If you'd like to learn more about this machine or anything else that Laguna offers, be sure to head over to LagunaTools.com and thank you for choosing Laguna.